Welcome to our lecture online. So far we've found the gravitational force on a small mass due to the presence of a thin ring. Then we found it for a flat disk. Now we're going to do it for a wide ring. So here we have a small mass m and a wide ring that has a hollow portion to it with mass m. So the full mass of this ring has mass m. It's directed in such a way that the plane is perpendicular to the line connecting this mass and the ring. I've drawn it like this so it's easier to see, but it's actually turned like this. Notice that the inner radius is A, the outer radius is B. The distance from the center to this mass here is X, that's a constant. And then the distance to any small little area element dA, which can be called R dr d theta because we're dealing with cylindrical coordinates. Uh, that distance from there to there would be the square root of R squared plus X squared. After all, this here is the right angle. So this here is the hypotenuse of that triangle. The angle between the line from here to the center of the circle and the line from there to any area element that's called phi and theta is the, is the angle that goes all the way around the disk. Also notice that we have a small force element df which points to a small area element but since the perpendicular components will all cancel out as you go around the circle, you only need to keep the horizontal component, the x component, which is df times the cosine of this angle, which is equal to the adjacent side x divided by the hypotenuse, which can be written like that. Also notice that the mass density is equal to the total mass divided by the total area, which can be written as mass divided by pi times b squared minus a squared, which is the area of the disk with the hollow portion there. Starting with the general equation of gravity for this small section df, it's equal to g times the product of the two masses divided by the distance between them squared. Now we're going to replace dm, what, what dm is equal to, it's equal to the density times dA. And let's see here, and we're going to not just find df, we're going to find dfx, so let's do this. So this can be written as g m and instead of dm we write density times the dA which is r dr d theta all divided by r squared plus x squared. In this case x will be a constant. And now we're going to find the x component of that. So we have dfx is equal to g m density r dr d theta divided by, now here we're going to multiply this whole thing by x over this. So in the numerator we're going to end up in another x and in the denominator we're going to have this raised to the 3 halves power. So we have r squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power. We multiply this times the square root of that. Okay, so now I think we're ready to integrate. We're going to integrate over theta we're going to integrate over r, so everything else is a constant which can come outside the integral sign. So we can say that f in the x direction is equal to the integral, it's going to be double integral of df, which is equal to, grabbing all the constants out, we have g, m, rho, and x. And then we have the double integral. In the numerator we're going to have an r times this, I'm going to bring this in the denominator, which is going to be the quantity r squared plus x squared to the 3 halves, or it should be negative 3 halves power. We have an r, we have a dr, and we have a d theta. Theta is going to integrate from 0 to 2 pi, and r is going to go from a to b, the inner radius to the outer radius. All right. Now, to be able to integrate this, we need a proper differential. We need a 2r dr because we have a r squared in the, inside the parentheses here, which means, which means here that we need a 2 here, and then we're going to divide by 2 to compensate for that. So now we have a 2r dr. Okay, when we integrate over d theta, that becomes theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, which is simply 2 pi. So we can already do that. So this is equal to... 2 pi times g m density x over 2, and of course the 2's cancel out. And then when we integrate this, we end up with r squared plus x squared to the minus 1 half power, because we add 1 to the exponent, divide by minus 1 half, and we're going to evaluate this from a to b. 
which means that this is equal to, now this becomes a negative 2, because that goes to the numerator, negative 2 times gm density x times 1 over the square root of r squared plus x squared evaluated from a to b. Now we can go ahead and plug in those limits. So this becomes equal to minus 2 gm rho x times, I'm going to plug in the upper limit here, the upper limit for this becomes 1 over the square root of b squared plus x squared minus, let's see, 1 over the square root of a squared plus x squared. All right, now you might be bothered by this negative sign right here, but it turns out that this quantity here is smaller than this quantity since b is always larger than a. A larger denominator means a smaller fraction. So this will be a negative quantity. By taking this negative and put it in here, we can turn this around and making this into a positive quantity. And then I'm going to put the x over there as well. So we get the following. This is equal to a positive 2gm. Now, instead of writing rho, here we can write big M over pi times b squared minus a squared. So instead of writing rho, I'm going to write m divided by pi. And did I drop a pi here somewhere? I certainly did. I have a pi here, which I didn't carry through. So that should be here because I know eventually we're going to cancel out the pies and I drop my pie so there I got it back in there and let me put the 2 pi in here as well so this is equal to 2 pi gm big M over b squared minus a squared all right so then if I put my x inside the brackets I am now end up with x divided by the square root of a squared plus x squared minus x divided by the square root of b squared minus x squared. And this, in essence, is the equation we're looking for. This is the force between a small mass m and a disk that's hollow in the middle that has an inner radius of a and an outer radius of b that's pointed like this, perpendicular to the line connecting m to the center, and so the force between them is equal to this quantity right here. Now you say, well, I can't really see what that means. What we could do is remember that x divided by b squared minus x squared is really the cosine of the maximum angle when the radius is all the way out to the edge. And when we plug in x divided by a squared minus x squared, that's really the cosine of the angle phi when we're pointing to this point right here. So what I can do is I can write it like this. And by the way, I can get rid of the pi's. So this becomes 2 gm big M over b squared minus a squared times, here this becomes the cosine of phi when I point to the inner radius. So I'll write cosine of phi sub a minus the cosine of phi sub b. So now let's try to make sense out of this answer right here. Let's say that a goes to zero. Now when a goes to zero, then we have a solid disk which looks just like the previous video and we should end up with the very same answer. So what happens if, what if, and let me use the red pen so we can see that this is different, what if a goes to zero? Well, when a goes to zero, then the cosine of this angle, well, this angle becomes zero, and the cosine of, of this becomes one. So this becomes one minus that, and this becomes this divided by b squared. So then we end up with 2gm big M over b squared, because a goes to zero, and then here we would end up with one minus the cosine of b, which is the maximum angle all the way to the outside of the disk. And that's exactly what we ended up with before because this b squared, which is basically the large radius r or b here, could be written as follows. We can say that the sine of the maximum angle 
the sine of the maximum angle phi here is going to be equal to the opposite side which now would be b divided by the hypotenuse which would be the square root of r squared which now would be b squared plus x squared. So that means that b can be written as the product of these two and since we have b squared here LB, so what we can then write them, we can say that B squared is equal to the sine squared of phi times the quantity, well, I'll write the B first, B squared plus X squared. So if we replace this denominator here by this quantity right here, we end up with a sine squared, and then we write the sine squared as 1 minus the cosine squared, and then write out as a product, just like we did in the previous video, you'll end up seeing that we get the exact same answer for a solid disk as we did on the previous video. So it looks like this answer is correct, but it's good enough at this point, since A is not equal to zero, that we can then write the answer in this format. So it's sufficient to leave the answer either in this format or in this format, and then plug in the proper values for A and B, and you'll get the correct answer for the force of a small mass in the presence of a wide ring. And that's how it's done.